in doing the research for today's lesson, I learned something really amazing. I, I, I'm still like shocked about this. Did you know that a water droplet is a lens? I was like, woohoo, how cool is that? So as you can probably tell, today's lesson is going to be about it's going to be about lenses. So in this image, if you look in the background, you can see that there is a bridge back here. You can see me kind of doing a tracing of the shape in the background. And that bridge is out of focus because it's kind of far off in the distance and we're f zoomed in, our eyes are focusing in on, or the camera in this photograph is focusing in on these water droplets. They're sitting on a window looking in the direction of the bridge. Now if you look inside of each of those water droplets, you can see this bridge. There it is. Little spans. You can see I just copied that. You can see it's flipping it, so you can see that it's also upside down, which is something that lenses do. You can see the cable stretching out between it. Um, maybe if we were to look at the top of this water droplet, so if we were to look from maybe like up here and slice the water droplet in half, it would look something like this. So you'd have your bridge on the other side over here, and the light is then falling from that bridge. It's then being sent out in lots and lots and lots and lots of different directions so from each little point it's going in every direction but the lens is looking at it from one particular point the lens the light is coming off of it hitting the lens and then traveling through the lens and in this case we've got our eye or our sensor down here and the light is then going boop down onto whatever it is that it's being focused onto so the really amazing thing about lenses is that they're all over the place and you don't maybe think about it but this is actually a lens. An eye is a lens. It's one of the most advanced and amazing lenses that there are out there. And we'll talk a little bit more about that a little bit later. Now this is what a lens of a camera looks like on the inside. This is a diagram of, of, of a lens. And so we're going to go through and maybe label this. I'm going to delete that. That was just telling us a little bit of information about the lens. I'm also going to delete this because it's just telling us where the focus focusing elements of, of this lens are. Right here you can see that one there's lots and lots of little pieces and these are actually made out of glass so they're going to be sort of maybe we'll color them blue because everyone likes to color glass blue and each piece of glass is called an element now you put these pieces of glass together in a group and they are called a group pretty simple right so you've got your elements and your groups and in this lens you have a whole bunch of piece you have a whole bunch of elements and then you also have a whole bunch of groups so you have another group here another group here one here and then even just sort of the single one in the back here which is still i think maybe possibly technically called a a group to put them all together you need one big piece of metal or lots and lots and lots of pieces of metal or plastic or whatever the lens is made out of so we're going to make here what's called the barrel so here we've got our barrel and connecting to the barrel are lots and lots of little pieces of metal that are holding all of these pieces of glass in place or sometimes lenses are also made out of, of plastic so they don't necessarily have to be a piece of glass and so here we can have maybe divide our lens into a few pieces our barrel is is, is connected right here for example some often see that on a lens there will be many sort of different outside pieces and this lens maybe has a mount right here that connects it to the camera. So here's your camera. We've always we've already talked about cameras in this course, so you kind of we're not we're not going to explain too much about that. Back here is maybe your sensor. And the light is then coming through the lens. Boop, flying in this way all the way through all of this and then landing here on the sensor in the back. So how does all, what, what, what are all these other pieces in here? There's, there's quite a lot to building a lens. So how about we go through and diagram some of that? Now, we've already got our barrel here. We've, we've, we've talked about that. Now, this lens, I remember. if you remember, I erased a line that was on the bottom here, and it, was it said it was internal focusing, which basically means that each of these little, each of these little pieces of glass or each of these uh, groups is on sort of a roller. So we'll put like a little roller right here. And they are sliding back and forth to focus. And those are all connected with some complicated screws and pulleys and stuff like that. And they're connected to a ring that's on the whole outside of the lens. So let's, we'll make it right here. 
and you as the user, you're holding the camera with your one hand, so one hand is holding the camera right here. That's not a very good hand, sorry about that. And you are then turning this ring on the outside of the barrel, so it's sort of maybe like a rubber gummy piece of something, and you're turning it in one way or the other, and that is then sliding these pieces of glass back and forth and letting you focus the image that you're seeing on the other side. So maybe you have a tree that you want to focus on that's not going to be yellow, it's going to be brown. We'll put our tree right here. So you're focusing in on that tree and it's a certain distance from you. So to set that you need to turn your focus ring, zoom in, or not zoom, but focus in on that on that tree and then it'll appear focused here in your in your sensor and in the eye that is looking through the prism that is looking at the tree and you'll see your tree will then be focused onto your sensor or onto your film. We don't want to discriminate against people who use film. So so there we've got our let's see that is called our focus ring. And inside of the camera at another spot is another important important part of the lens which is also often connected to a ring and this is called the aperture and connected to the aperture is also another ring it might be like right here have some numbers on it often and this will be called the aperture and I'm just going to put it A period aperture ring so the A stands for A period stands for aperture like you see down here and the aperture is basically just a little it's like a kind of like the shutters on a window it opens and closes and we'll talk about aperture in um, more in depth in future lessons and we've already kind of d discussed it in a very broad sense already in this course the aperture just closes and opens it's like a big barn door allowing more or less light into uh, this lens so here you've got your elements your groups your barrel your ring fo your focus ring your aperture your aperture ring all that stuff and the only thing that I really want to tell you about before we move on to the next slide is about the lens coating now on the front end of this lens is going to be sort of a layer of it's going to kind of maybe look purple or red or blue it depends on the, the type of lens you have and the type of coating it has um, but there will be some sort of synthetic material that's put on the front that's called the lens coating and lens coating is important because it allows you to shoot into light sources without getting what's called ghosting which just means that the light source inside of the lens will make all kinds of weird the light will bounce around and make it kind of look funny on the other on the other end when it's actually being looked at as a picture so a lens coating is important to helping keep that light focused and making sure that when it hits the lens it just goes straight in and it doesn't bounce around and make all kinds of makes make a big mess on your photo so lens coating is very important it's important because you want to protect it you don't want to get it scratched and you um, also don't want to change it by using maybe some sort of lens cleaning fluid that might affect it in some way so just as a piece of information that's really important for all photographers protect your lens coatings protect your lens on both ends you're actually going to be able to have you're going to have lens coating on on both sides and you're going to want to protect the glass and the coating on on, on both ends of your lenses we're going to do a really quick little literacy lesson here about how to read um, about the lens without even having to open the manual. So you can see here on this lens, it's actually detracted. It's been put inside of the, it's pulled itself inside of the camera, which most compact cameras do. Uh, you can see here that the lens is made by Canon. You can see that it is a zoom lens, and we'll talk about what that is here in a second. And you can see that it is a three times zoom. And all this means is that it, it takes the widest version of your photo so say you are looking through the viewfinder and you see this scene right here and you've got a person in the room who you want to maybe zoom in on if you go from the widest setting the widest setting that, uh, that your lens will do and you zoom in on that person say right here the difference between this widest image and the smallest image is a th is a zoom factor of three and that actually, you can actually, if you do the math right here, this 3.8 and the 17.4, that is reflected in these numbers down here. Now, 4.8 is actually the real size of the zoom lens. And there's something called 35 millimeter equivalent. So if you're reading a lot of times in the literature, you'll see a 35 millimeter equivalent 
marked and that just has to do with the size if it was on a 35 millimeter camera this le this camera has a tiny little sensor that's a lot smaller than 35 millimeters so it has a smaller lens but if it, what they're saying when you see a 35 millimeter equivalent they're saying if the lens was bigger if the 30 if the if or sorry if the sensor was a 35 millimeter sensor like this yellow would be then this number would be a lot bigger it would stay and stay instead of 5 it might say 18 or something like that so that's just an important piece of information now over here you can see 1 to 2.8 dash and then 4.9 and this right here is the this is the widest possible aperture at these different settings so at 5.8 your aperture, your maximum aperture is 2.8 and at 17.4 your maximum aperture is 4.9. The widest aperture is very important. It's, it's very important actually. And having a widest aperture of 2.8 for a camera like this is actually not too bad. Um, 2.8 just means that it's a very wide aperture. If it was 5.6 it would be smaller and thereby a slower lens. So you don't necessarily want a slower lens. The reason you don't want a slower lens is if you're in a dark room and you're taking a photograph, you want as much light as you possibly can to get inside of that camera. So a 2.8 is letting in more light than a 5.6. So you can see here when you're zooming in, when you're zoomed in at three times zoom, that you're getting less light than you are when you're shooting at the widest. Um, at the widest angle and we'll talk about why that's important in the exposure lesson but it's just important to know the smaller these numbers the better. Now here you can see two different types of lenses you can see here this is a zoom lens and this is what's called a fixed or a prime lens. Now a prime lens is just 50 millimeters so it just has one length that it can go and this one right here is actually, if you look closely, I think it says 28, yep, so this is a 28 to 200 millimeter lens. So this means that this lens can zoom in, so it can take a really wide shot, and then you could zoom in and take a really small shot. But this, this, can, this lens over here can only take a wide shot. It can only take, well, what's called a normal shot, because 50 millimeters is what's called normal and it can't zoom there's no there's no zoom factor on it the only way that you can zoom in on this lens is by walking closer to the subject now how about we take a look at what that would look like so we've got our zoom lens let's say we have that 28 to 200 millimeter lens when you've got it on your camera so here's your camera here's your lens and you're looking out over a room let's say you've got a say a really long table right here and some people are sitting at it you're taking some picture a picture of them you've got your lens on you're looking through the viewfinder and you're a little ways away you're pretty far away from them maybe you're um, let's say you're two meters or something like that so you're looking at them and you've got your lens on at 28 millimeters it's gonna look something like this you're gonna see you're gonna see have a pretty wide range of view from left to right and you're going to be able to see quite a lot also up and down this is it the zoom zoom goes in both directions now say you zoom in from 28 millimeters to 50. 50 millimeters might look something like this. So you're cutting off maybe your Aunt Joe and your or your Uncle Joe and your Aunt Betty on these sides. So your 50 millimeter is going to be a little bit more narrow. And this is actually pretty exaggerated, probably be a little bit wider than that. Now say you wanted to zoom in on just one person who was maybe sitting in the very center of the table. Then maybe you would move up to your 200. So here we've got that would be your range. This would maybe be your 200 millimeter. So here you can, when you're looking at a 200 millimeter image, all of this right here has been cut off. You can't see any of that. All you're seeing is this one person right here. This is your picture about. Um, and in this case over here, maybe your picture would actually look something like this. And in this other picture, you're obviously looking at a much much wider image something like that and all of this is just basically called focal length so the length of your lens all right so that was your lesson about lenses in the next video we're going to talk about what the difference is between a good lens and a bad lens